Um, how many people have been, uh, were here in the early days, like the first year of Maker Faire back in 2006? One, two, that's great. Um, we, so we started, right, Make Magazine started in 2005. The fair started in 2006. Um, people started coming to Dale Doherty, the founder, and saying, oh, we want to, I want to start a Maker Faire. And, and it just kind of on demand started to happen. Dale said, okay. Um, I was one of those people. I went up and met with him and said, um, I'd like to do a Maker Faire in Oakland, California, where I live. And um, it was a handshake. <laughs> Great. Okay, go ahead. Um, I did that and then was pulled in actually to help launch our global licensing program for Maker Faire. So what's happened over the last, like since 2011, my show, the first East Bay Mini Maker Faire was 2010 and uh, we're heading into our seventh year this year. I got pulled in to actually write a book on how to make a Maker Faire and kind of articulate the process. Um, and actually articulate the vision for what we want Maker Faire to be so that people kind of, you know, as it's moving around the world, um, there's some of this point of view that sticks with it as it, as it scales. Um, we are, we, we have gotten to the point now where this year we're probably looking at close to 200 Maker Faires around the world in over 35 countries around the world. This year there are Maker Faires in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. There's going to be one in Moscow, uh, three in war-torn Ukraine. Uh, it's, it's South America, Bogota. It's, it's really fascinating to see it spread. Maker Faire Paris was just a few weeks ago, it was something like 65,000 people. So anyway, a lot of growth. Same things happened with schools. All of a sudden, schools started approaching Maker Faire, or even just doing Maker Faires, calling them Maker Faires. And so, um, as something of a response, we have um, articulated again the platform, and I'm wondering how to advance my slide. Is that it? Oh, yeah. That's not a clean image. Um, <laughs> School Maker Faire is a pixelated landscape picture. Um, School Maker Faire is no different than this, right? It's a showcase of invention, creativity, and resourcefulness. It's a show and tell. And um, generally uh, taking place on a school campus, um, so not incurring like venue fees and things like that. Um, we're looking for a majority of kid-made projects for School Maker Faires. Um, wide open, right? Projects from any discipline. It, it can be um, just like Maker Faire, it could be a goat project and it could be your rocket project and it could be your lace making project um, we would like them to be free to attend so it's not a ticketed event that's marketed in that way um, and we'd like it to be by and for that school community no not back to that there we go just scrolling through some images school maker fair is collaborative I mean, I like that, that Tapagami you guys probably hopefully saw Tapagami today or will see just around the corner. Um, that's kind of, the, you know, his work, like he, he offers, and Tapagami is actually a project you can, uh, he has a book on how to do Tapagami and you can actually do that. It's a very inexpensive material and it's a great group make project. We do see like group make and large scale making projects where you walk into your room and everybody's engaged and it's a complete mess. Like that's part of Maker Faire, and that should be part of a school Maker Faire. I'm gonna use this thing. Uh, experimental. People should be learning, trying new things, including adults. Um, fooling around with technologies that they don't know or materials they don't know. Um, again, that just that level of engagement. I mean, that's why we're here, right? Because Maker Faire is actually um, kind of the Trojan horse, right? For, for, for learning and education. It's, it's so much fun, super engaging, um, active, supersized fun. Again, music's possible. I already said the goat. And, and we have some resources that help you with this rubric around um, around diversity of content, but again, that's a big part of our brand. And when you're thinking about doing a Maker Faire, um, 
Think about juxtaposition, think about contrast, think about surprise, and be completely open to what projects and making, ah, what projects and making, uh, I love slideshows. Schoolmaker Fair, we're hoping it's not a bunch of trifolds. I don't know how many of you guys have science fairs at your schools. Quite a few. Um, it's not completely dominant, though. Actually, I'm surprised by that response. Uh, you know, we we would like the the. This is part of the joy of and and the experience of being a maker is actually like have not just the experience of of doing the work, but then telling the story and being able to articulate you know, what you just did. That's a huge point of learning and a great experience for kids. And, uh, you know, when you become a maker, the other, the, it's not just you tell the story once, you begin, these makers here this morning, I guarantee you their pitch is about like another minute and a half shorter than it was when it started this morning. Like you start to distill the points you need to communicate and, and it's, a, it's a great exercise to have people walking through your booth all, you know, over a period of time. Um, Projects and makers, demos of maker tools. So things like, you know, maybe there isn't somebody in your school that's built a drone, but you can build a room and hang poultry netting from the ceiling and you can have people, you know, driving a little quadcopter or something in a, you know, inside a three walled classroom with a net in front of everybody. And it's a demo, or you could have someone demoing a laser cutter if you're lucky enough to get someone to bring one by. They don't, you know, it doesn't have to all be um, you know, projects they've made, um, hands-on make and take activities so the group make things, and it can also be talks. So here's some pictures of some school maker fairs around with kids kind of showing and telling. Tools as part of the exhibit, projects in process. This is, a, I love that, that project and it's pixelated also. Um, these pictures, I don't know why they're so poor quality. Um, I downloaded them from, from something else and they clearly didn't make it. But they were, um, Dale just got an email from a principal in Queens. She sent him a note actually asking him to come speak, which wasn't going to happen. But she followed, she said, My, our school maker fair is next week. We're really excited. It's our first one. She sent another message um, <coughs> the day after saying that it was the greatest thing she'd experienced as a principal in her 13-year career. This was a note we got this week. It was pretty phenomenal. Make and take tools. So, you know, considerations around around safety and layout when you're actually allowing for some of these things. We can talk a little bit more about that, but, um, and there is information about this in our playbook. Uh, but definitely the experience of, of handling tools is a, you know, a huge part of the joy um, and the kind of the thrill of making. Robotics clubs. Many of you might have them in your district or associated like clubs with schools Even if they're not in your school, you know inviting a robotics club or an older kids to come demo is, is super fun And they often will let kids drive And then again that sort of the new tool set 3d printers and things like that um, I think it's important to um, We see we see those new tools as like best contextualized amidst the, the range of tools, right? So, and again, it goes back to that surprise and juxtaposition thing. If you've got some of this new tech, you wanna, you wanna almost, you know, contrast it with old. So yes, have it, it's not mandatory. And you don't have to have a makerspace program to do a school maker fair. You don't have to have all the tools. You start with what's happening in the school already. Um, we talked about this. I mean, I think our motivation also is that um, the school maker fairs start to feed content and um, young makers up the food chain to the city maker fairs, the local mini maker fairs, and then even these big fairs. Like some kids really find their place at maker fair, and uh, you know, the opportunity to keep showing and and, and growing is uh, is here. What do we do? We provide a logo and graphic assets. We have a playbook. 
We have a set of checklists. We allow you permission to use the Maker Fair trademark. Um, more resources. There's a, a Google group of sharing that you know of, of you know crowdsourced learning. I mean, we're just beginning this, so um, it's definitely a beta stage. And uh, a map. You're on the Maker Fair map, which is cool. We just started to add the um, the schools that participate on our MakerFair.com/map. So 10 basic steps, just run through them. Um, don't do it yourself. Figure out who you can do it with, maybe even someone you might like having a glass of wine with at the end of the night, you know, when you're working late. Um, or, you know, if you're a kid, well, I'm hoping there might be kids here who are interested in organi organizing, yeah? So, you know, maybe get a posse, right? Like your friends. You know, twist their arm, like, come on, let's do this together. Um, catalyze support. So then you have to go out and tell the story of, like, what is Maker Faire? Um, and you have to, you have to, some of those assets people are starting to share, slide decks are common, you know, trying to show pictures, show, share videos of what happens at Maker Faire. There's a lot of assets and resources online and, and that we're building around telling this story. Uh, but you need to kind of talk to your community, right? The school is... Administrators, teachers, janitors, kids, clubs. Um, decide on your date, your location, how long it's gonna be. Go to makerfair.com slash school and register. Um, you can actually read the registration before you go through all of this. Definitely look at our site and, uh, and review it. Um, there is no fee to register as a school Maker Faire. Um, and then you start get to work on building the content and organizing your call for makers. So you, then you're then you're really like, okay, where is it going to come from? Is there curriculum? You know, are, are there some willing teachers and curriculum that's existing that we can just sort of transpose into a fair setting? Um, do we need to um, plan ahead and generate projects that do this? Do we not care and it's just going to be all, you know, all on-site making? Um, there's some strategy around that. We can talk a little bit more in terms of question and answer. Just keeping going. Once you've got your your content and your call going, and you've, you're getting the participation lined up, then you're going to start to promote the event and tell the story to your community through all your traditional mechanisms around school communication to let them know when it's going to happen, what's the expectation, how long is it, all that stuff. Um, you want to design the experience, so then you take all of that information that you've received from your makers and you start to kind of think about the experience of the attendee and your visitors. Um, you know, what rooms, who's in what room and where, what do they see when they get there. Um, host and document the event. Pictures are super important. Um, telling the story to your community and kind of bringing it all back home. Uh, we ask you to complete a survey after you've done the Maker Fair, so that we get some information and are able to kind of track the growth and development of this as we start to see it move around the world. Um, and then re-register for your next one, so that you're actually, you know, it's simple form, but just re-registering for each show. Uh, here's some signage that people um, have done, to, you know, just to show the example. The School Maker Fair logo is fixed. And then we have some branding guidelines that show you how to kind of add your school name next to it. It's very simple. You know, our colors are simple. It's easy to do in Word and also design documents. Um, and then we also, um, in term, one of the, I'll go through the rules, but the, one of the things we don't want you to do is register a top level domain for the maker fairs. That's for the city facing fairs that are marketing an event and, you know, really out there trying to galvanize multiple communities. This is like your school name dot com or dot edu slash maker fair is fine with us. And this is an example of the way they did it. They built a page and they have the logo. Um, so, um, just before I open it up to Q&A, um, the, the, just the, the rules, like the hard and fast rules, I mentioned the URL issue. Um, we want you to, we're willing to let you rate fundraise for it. We're kind of setting the barrier at $5,000. We'd like that money to go back into making and curriculum supplies or staffing or whatever it is. Um, 
the reporting, the registration. It's very important not to, to use the trademark Maker Faire without actually having signed up. And am I forgetting? mostly students and I didn't hear at the beginning of your talk but um, we're really eager to see more students take leadership roles in um, planning this so for those of you who have older students uh, that you're teaching or even very young ambitious students um, having them uh, take charge and be the ones who are planning and organizing it is fantastic but of course it's not realistic and um, one thing that I love about Schoolmaker, I'm sorry, my name is Michelle Hlubink and I helped plan this program with Sabrina. Um, but we like to talk um, about everybody's a maker um, and I know that's similar to the phrase that Maker Ed uses, but it really it's boots on the ground um, in schools where everybody gets a chance to participate. And this is the way that we're throwing that net really far and wide and trying to pull in and learn about what's happening in schools everywhere with makers that we don't find out about. So please start these maker fairs, tell us what's happening so that we can share that more widely. Thanks, Michelle. I think the, the just the other thing she touched on is our vision around this is like a majority of kid driven work. Um, we want you to you know, possibly open the call for makers up to parents and teachers and, and kind of, again, flatten the hierarchy. Like, learn, making isn't just what you do when you're in school, and then you get a cell phone and it's over, right? Like, we want to demonstrate lifelong, when it, you know, be examples of lifelong learning. Um, and then, the, again, also the hands-on making areas. And so we do have a playbook on the greatest hits of hands-on making at Maker Faire, just to give you some ideas. How many folks in the audience are um, educators? Okay, and how many are parents? Students? <laughs> um, other? What, but what are you, if you could describe yourself as other? Okay, mentor for the, like a club, um, outside educator in a way, or a community member? Yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody else just learning here? A coach, mentor, and organizer? Okay. Great. So, I, again, this can also start from all of these places. Um, it can be school run, it can be parent run, it can be student run. Um, and then the other thing is just, you know, when it is. It also kind of can reflect that, whether it's during the school or after school, um, whether it's on a weekend, really that's up to you and the temperature of your, of your community. So, questions? So, uh, are there resources to find out if there are other people in the community doing this so we're not kind of siloing off and maybe share resources between schools? There, there are. We're still, again, we're still beginning this, but there's a, a group that you, you know, you can join. We're probably going to port it over to a new platform we're using for our global community that actually has like a... Uh, a register, you know, you can actually search for your area and your, you know, California. It's getting big enough. Last year, I think we had something like 40 show, 40 maker school maker fairs, or somewhere in there. And this year, it's already at like close to a hundred. Um, the other important reason to register is because as soon as you register, you get put onto our school maker fair map, right? So and and get invited to the community. Other questions? Go ahead, and I'll repeat your question. I would hate to be doing it inside. Oh, wait, 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 this is going to work. We need another mic. Where is it at? Right back in there. I'm Go ahead. Eight, and... I'm an eighth grade going into ninth, and I was wondering if there is a limit to the like amount of boots for the maker fair. Like, can you have like over five boots or something? You mean one person or the whole event? For the whole fair. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, we're kind of like we like scale to make your fair. <laughs> I think that sure. I mean, we we'd like you to really, uh, you know, extract all the makers from your school. So as many people that want to show, yes. Okay. Thanks. 
But there was a comment in our workshop yesterday that at their first Maker Faire, there were so many things to make and do that the kids were frustrated that they didn't get to do all the things that were offered. So um, in your first Maker Faire, start kind of on the smaller side and figure things out and then you can scale up. But yeah, bring as much making, but also like the hands-on experience is really nice. Hi, I'm from Canada, and we, uh, we really want to do this at our school, but there's only a small amount to us, and I'm getting a lot of pushback from some of the staff, and so what is sort of like the best thing that I could say to them to sell them on the idea? I get a lot of like, well, we already do this, or isn't this what we already, like, yeah, it is what we already do, but it's a way of like promoting almost, I think, like a growth mindset around it, right? So what's your, what's your best advice for that? You mean... To other, you're an educator. Yeah. Like so this is an like educator to educator. Yes. Um, teacher. Well, one walk. one thing. I mean, one. I mean, I'll let you answer this too. But one thing I might suggest is like, are there are there could it be also a parent teacher collaboration and not actually push it on the teachers that aren't really down yet? Because I'll tell you, with Maker Fair, you get people there, they're converted. Exactly. So. You know, my approach was starting the East Bay Mini Maker Fair in Oakland. Um, it's at a school, a K through eight school, and uh, our whole our whole deal was like total soft sell. Like from the beginning, it was like teachers, you do not have to be involved. We're you know, or you're welcome, but there was no mandatory involvement. And I know probably from a school point of view, you want to want to have a comprehensive thing, well, but but maybe just yeah. move around it. Path of least resistance. We had a group uh, yesterday from a very small Montessori school. He described it as you could, um, like if you close your eyes for a second, you might walk all the way past it. Um, so, uh, and they they had just a few makers the first year and then 12 the next year. And that's a huge um, jump and a success because it's a small community. Um, is that what you mean? Like, you know, if your school is too small, um, should you hope? Oh, I see. Yeah, well, and then I think the other angle to talk about is that um, the importance of being able to tell a good story about your projects, whether or not you finish it, um, whether or not, you know, it's all whiz bang cool latest technology to be able to talk about why you're passionate about it and the process that you put into it is such an important skill for our current um our current economic climate like it's all about the, the way that you talk about it and um, i like to say that here at maker fair we're, we vote with our feet there are like no winners or losers but you can tell which are the most successful projects because they're surrounded by people right so um that's and that's real feedback that people are getting in this show and tell format of a school maker fair. We have time for one more question. Uh, my school is actually hold, hosting an innovation fair this weekend, but I'm up here. Um, I know that uh, they've uh, they have an aerospace company that's partnering with them. That that is some. I think they have you know some title on. Uh, you know, some signage there. Uh, we, so it's not a Maker Fair; it's an innovation <laughs> fair. But under the Maker Fair umbrella, is it uh, allowed to have industry partnerships or frowned upon? No, we just said no. We're welcoming. We welcome your business community to get involved. Um, and you know, we have a tradition as an event of just you know treating people like sponsors and recognizing their logo maybe at the bottom of the poster. I mean, there's a lot of examples out there of how to how to do that. And then we then then there's the kind of fundraising cap at five thousand dollars. Just because if you start to really monetize it, you need to probably move into the city facing uh, program, which is a little bit more about being an aggressive, you know, sort of marketing and, and just a, bi a bigger deal and we're learning things may tweak a, a bit um, got contact information again if you can't remember makerfair.com slash school this postcard will <laughs> will help you so I'll just um, throw those back maybe people can grab them we'll be over here on the side yeah I have one uh, one thing to add. I, I went to a school-based maker fair in Oakland just a few weeks ago, and one thing that made it very successful was that they invited other schools to participate as well. So at least two other elementary schools had representation at this particular school. So it's kind of a way to seed and help other schools to get them to kind of step into the process without having to fully commit being on site. And it, it just enriched the whole experience to yeah. having other schools involved. So thank you so much. Sure. All right. Thank you guys.
Next up, we're going to hear from young makers about computer technology. I'm excited because this is going to be all young makers speaking, from what I understand, and that's the best things to ground for. That would be starting in just about five minutes. So if you want to come up and get your uh, technology set up,